Today we're gonna to rebuild this XT8100. This also applies to the 8120. The 8120 is just meant for a two by system. And yeah, it doesn't matter if you have a short cage or a long cage, this video is for you. And some tools you're gonna to need are some Allen keys, a screwdriver, some pliers, razor blade, small flathead, and a pick. All right, so before we pop off the clutch cover, we're gonna pull back the cage right here and we're gonna to to take out that little pin. There you go, now you wanna pull up the parallelogram like, like this and then you have the cage spring out, there you go. And if your cage refuses to spring back, um, you, you wanna make sure your clutch is off right here. It's gonna be in this position, right here it's off and right here it's on, so you wanna make sure it's off. Then grab your Allen key and pop off the cover. Great, we have all our bolts out. Now just pop off the cover and there's your clutch. Just grab it and you should be able to pull it off pretty easy. There you go. If it doesn't come off, just grab a pick and pry it up. Now if this lever moves kind of slow and you want to regrease it, just grab your pick, pop off this tiny little clip. Like that. There's also a rubber seal here. I'm gonna pop that off as well. And then pull out the lever. There you go. You grab your formula and pop loose the cage. And the shaft pops out as well. Now you don't need to do this at all, but if you want, if something is broken over here on the P-knuckle, I'll show you how to take it apart. Just grab some needle nose pliers and pop off this clip. It can be pretty difficult, it's kind of thin. Once you got the clip pushed out like this, just grab your pick and it'll just pop out. You don't want to lose it. I'd put it in a magnetic tray if I was you. And then just pop it out. That thing just, and now we just unscrew the bolt. There you go. And now we have everything taken apart, but we haven't done the pulleys yet. So if they spin smooth and fast like this, just leave them alone. I wouldn't touch them. But if they don't, if they're rough, um, you want to regrease them or they might need to be replaced. So how do you check that? There's two of these aluminum seals on here. So you want to push one out like that, it just pops out. And then uh, as you see, we have a ring here. The best thing to use for this is a razor blade. You want to just lift it, go from under there. You can go around all sides. You don't want to rip the seal, pop it off. See, there's a little bit of dirt on this one, but it kept it out pretty good. As you can tell, um, we have grease in there. But it's all good. It spins nice and smooth. So, but if there's a bunch of dirt in here, you want to spray it out probably with some brake cleaner. Make sure you take out the other seal before you do that so you don't damage it. And if you if you spray it out and it still spins all rough, you, that means you need to replace your bearing and your pulley. And once you've got it all cleaned out and re-greased, this is how you put it back together. Just put your seal on. You want to pop it in with your finger like this, just on all sides. After you're done, you want to make sure you see the two rings. There's a silver one here, a silver one here. That means it's popped in all the way and you're all good to go. Then grab your other metal seal, pop it on and make sure it spins nice and smooth. There you go. And now we also have our clutch here. You want to separate this as well to clean it. You want to grab like a small flathead screwdriver. You want to put it in here. You want to twist it and then it should pop out the clutch. There you go. All right, now we got everything nice and taken apart. Now it's finally time to clean. For this you can use a cleaner or a degreaser, and you can use like a nylon brush or a toothbrush, or you can even use like a pipe cleaner like this. The thing you want to be careful of is you, if you're using like a brake cleaner or acetone, or like a harsh cleaner, you want to stay away from painted stuff, plastic parts, and rubber stuff because it could degrade that or discolor it. And in my case, I'm using this ultrasonic cleaner. All I'm using is water and dish soap. You have an ultrasonic cleaner here some stuff you should not put in there first of all we have the pulleys you only want to put them in there if you took i have all the seals if you put them on with the seals the water will get in there 
it's going to make the bearings rust and you'll have to replace them which sucks and second of all we have the clutch stuff this stuff i would not recommend putting in there to clean it off by hand with some brake cleaner and as well as this you don't need to really you don't really need to do it it's pretty easy to clean off on its own cover and this other little clutch part there you go all right now we got everything all nice and cleaned down ready to go and also if there's any replacement parts you need like pulleys maybe the clutch is worn out i'll have a link for any replacement parts in the description and yeah time for assembly some things you're going to need are grease i'm going to use this premium grease as well as some park tool blue grease right, and if you took out your pinochle which again you don't need to do just grease up this area a little bit pop the bolts in like so and now you just want to put a little bit of grease on the threads and then we have a little stopper thing here you want to make sure this little flange part is facing towards the back of the derailleur and yeah screw it on All right, you want to get that part until it's past all those threads. Then you want to grab your little clip on there and pop it on. There you go. All right, now moving on to the binocle. You want to grab your spring. You want to grease it up to prevent rust and whatnot. And then just go ahead and pop it in like so. Pretty easy, pretty simple the way it goes on. And now we have our plastic seal. You just want to line up that tab like so. Pop it on. All right, so just grease up this area nice and good and grab your cage. You wanna have that washer on there. It doesn't hurt to put a little bit of grease on the threads as well. Have that washer right there, that's how it goes on. Now pop it on. There's only really one hole for the spring. So just join the two together. Kind of push it down when you're gonna, un when you're gonna screw in the, uh, when you're gonna screw in the shaft and make sure that thing's lined up, that tab. Grease up the inside of there. Grab your little shaft, put, put some grease on that as well and screw it on. There you go. You want to kind of compress this down because it's going to want to spring out. So just compress it down as you're screwing it on. And you don't have to screw it on too tight. You just have it snug for now. Now, before we put this cage back over here, we got to put our lever in. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of grease in that O-ring just to keep out the dirt. You want to find that hole down in there and stick in the lever. Like so make sure it pops in like that. And now just grab your clip. You want to have the lever all the way up. So this thing actually goes into its groove and then just kind of push it in like that. You want to wiggle the lever and make sure it's all the way in. It doesn't come out. And yeah, just make sure it moves nice and smooth. There you go. Now we're going to put the cage back into its original spot. You want to grab your cage. You want to tw twist it counterclockwise. At the same time, you want to pull the parallelogram up and around. Now we have our cage in place. You want to have your stopper pin on standby and screw it in. There you go. So after you got that tightened down, um, you want to make sure this moves nice and smooth. You want to snug down this bolt. Again, you don't want it too tight, but you just want it snug because the threads on, on the back of that are aluminum. You don't want to strip those out. Right, so now comes the very important part of putting on the clutch. Um, before you do that, you want to make sure this shaft right here is clean. This has got to be perfectly clean. You got to clean it off with some brake cleaner or something harsh to get all the grease and dirt off. You don't want anything on there. Same with the inside of this clutch. You want to get it's like a paper towel, kind of wad it up. Like so, put some brake cleaner on there. Clean out that inside. You don't want any grease on there. And you want to clean off this outside as well and the inside of this band here. All right, so now I want to grease up the inside of this band here. Um, there's a lot of debate on what type of grease to use. Essentially, you want something that's thick and heat resistant. I'm just using this uh, Park Tool Blue Grease. It's meant for bearings. It can uh, withstand heat, so I'm going to use that. You can also use the Shimano Internal Hub Grease, and they have a special grease just for the clutches. So... Yeah, again, you want some thick and heat resistant, so I'm just gonna use this. You wanna grease up the inside of that band. You wanna wedge it open with a screwdriver like so. And then now you wanna make sure you have the tab in the right place. So as you can see, there's two tabs. There's a short, longer tab and a shorter tab. You wanna have the shorter tab is gonna be facing down towards this tension pulley. You wanna have this, make sure this thing's up like so, and then slide the two together. that and then just grab onto it pull out the screwdriver and then you're all good now with all the grease everywhere i would double check and break clean the shaft and the inside of there again because you don't want any grease on there all right so once you got that cleaned off you want to grab your other little clamp thingy right here slide it on and you want to make sure the side without the hole is facing up because that little tab lines up with that little notch right there and you don't want it to slip around and cause a problem 
So you grab this, you wanna make sure your clutch lever is off right here in this position. You wanna go ahead, line this up. You wanna have the thicker part of the barrel right here. You want that to be facing out so it's not pinching this in. And yeah, uh, line this up and you want it to go all on at the same time. There you go. And yeah, there you go. Once you got your clutch on, you wanna make sure you push it down all the way and you just feel the cage. And then you want to make sure when you put the lever on that you feel a big difference. There should be a big difference in how much tension there is. It should be a lot tighter. Now to adjust the tension of your clutch, you have this tiny little two millimeter screw, which pinches on this band. Now the best way to adjust this is to put it on your bike. You'll get a much more accurate feel of how tight the tension is. And this derailleur actually has a cap right here, which you can pop open or close to adjust your tension. So again, yeah, I recommend putting it on your bike and adjusting it then. And now it's time to put on our cover. So first we have our rubber seal. First of all, you wanna make sure it's situated the right way. Just put a tiny sliver of grease on here. It'll catch and stop any water or dirt attempting to get in here and you don't want any, believe me. So you wanna make sure it's popped all the way into the groove. So yeah, make sure that seal is seated in there all nice and good. And check that the inside of your cap is clean and pop it on. And now just screw in all your bolts. Uh, again, you want these snug. You don't want these very tight because you remember these are very small and you're screwing them into aluminum threads. So yeah, and now time to put on our pulleys. We have the G pulley or the guide pulley here. Again, you want all that lettering, all the Shimano, the POM, and the arrows. You want that facing towards the back of the derailleur over here. So grab your cage, slide it on, and screw it on your pulley. And now for our tension pulley or the T pulley. You can see the side with all the lettering, the Shimano, the arrows. You want that face in the back of the derailleur. You don't want any lettering or stuff on the front and then line it up and screw it on. And for the cherry on top, I always like to put a drop of chain lube on each of these little pivots and put some grease on that spring to prevent rust. And now you just want to double check that your pulley bolts are snug. They spin nice and smooth like so. And then just put on your little clamp bolt like that. Now you got yourself a fully rebuilt derailleur. And I usually work on older stuff, so I just wanted to show you guys how much bigger a new derailleur is than something from 97, like this 739 here. So, pretty cool. So yeah, I hope you found this video useful in some way. I'll have all the replacement parts uh, linked in the description. And I'll see you guys. Bye.